Cheers, guys. Welcome to this Tuesday, January 3rd, 2017 edition of VR News. There is a lot going on today, tech-wise, in all kinds of different areas. It literally, it's one of those days when you know you are in the midst of another tech war. And I think this one is going to be every bit as vicious as the 3D accelerated wars of the late 90s. And we know which survivors came out of that, and we know who the casualties were. But uh, you know what? With that said, I can't wait for 2017 to play out and see, after everything's been dusted off, where everything lies. And more importantly, and most importantly, what has survived. And that's because we're not on the sidelines of this, guys. We are in the trenches which, you know, with whichever technology we chose whether it's one or more of the solutions, we're in the trenches, and this is going to be a pivotal year. So let's get into it and start with Lenovo. Now, Lenovo is one of the partner companies with Microsoft. We know that they've got that Windows 10 VR solution that they've been touting, especially at the last event. We now get to see something tangible. Still can't test it, but we can see it. And aesthetically, Tell me, guys, does this not look clearly inspired by the Sony PlayStation VR? The sweeping curves, the molding, basically, it's inspired by Sony PlayStation VR, and that's okay. I love the Sony design. It's great. What do we know now that we didn't know a few weeks ago when last we heard Microsoft speak up on this? Well, we've got an idea now, not just what it looks like, but the weight of this thing, it's about 350 grams, puts it in a class lighter than the Rift, lighter than the Vive. We also know the price between three and $400 according to Lenovo, but closer to 300. And really guys, that is marketing speak for 349.99 US. That's really all that is. Now, what else do we know? We know some more specs. 1400 by 1400 per eye as opposed to the 1080 by 1200 we currently have. So the question begs, is Microsoft's minimum specification going to be able to power that adequately? We're going to have to wait and see because to me that seems awfully low but doable, but we'll find out. There's still a lot we don't know, including the elephant in the room, tracking. Because that's huge, because these guys are going with a completely different tracking technology. They're going with inside out, as opposed to outside in, that we experience with the Vive and the Rift. And we have yet to see it in action. You know, verifiable action, where someone or a publication we know has been able to test it and take it for a spin. So it'll be interesting. So we know a little bit more, like I said, aesthetics, weight price, supposed features, some specs, the real meaty stuff. I think we're going to know a little bit more during CES 2017, but there will be more waiting to come, I have no doubt. Now, if you are going to CES 2017, speaking of that event, The Verge, who I got that last article from, and JetBlue are doing kind of a co-promotion for a few of the flights to Vegas for that event. They're going to be handing out Google Cardboard style HMDs. They've also said that even if you get in on a flight that doesn't offer those, their Wi-Fi is 360 streaming friendly. So that was kind of cool. Be interesting if anyone watching this happens to be on one of those JetBlue flights. Would love to hear from you. Now, next story. Hublo announcing a 360 degree VR camera. Now, when I said earlier we are in the midst of a war, I was not kidding. We have so much variety. Some of that variety is getting gobbled up through acquisition, like some of the eye tracking acquisitions we've seen. Others still striking out on their own. We're going to talk about some of that as well. But this company, well, they're targeting the 360 degree camera market, and they're doing it pretty convincingly based on specs and price. So Hublo is the company, they are Hong Kong based. Get a load of this. So this camera can do 4K streaming and recording. It has 
three pairs of 200 degree fisheye cameras for what they're calling a 360 degree panoramic view. And there are sensors on each camera providing a high level of image capture and stereoscopic output accounts for left and right eye movement, creating true life depth perception for a fully immersive 3D experience. So these things sound terrific and admittedly they sound pretty high end. So what's the price? And that's where my mind was kind of taken aback a bit because the price shocked me. 1,000 US, basically pr twice the price of a Gear 360 for functionality way closer to the Nokia Ozo than the Gear 360 for 45 times less the price as the Ozo. Now, what's going to be interesting to me, this is a Hong Kong company, about 25 people, how good ultimately their software is, because that's a huge strength for Nokia is their software bundle and the software that stitches it together. It's high quality. Is Hublot's going to be as high quality? And visually, where is that quality going to slot in? Is it going to be closer to 360 or closer to Ozo? If it's closer to Ozo, they got a hell of a product on their hand at that price point. And I would love to see, will love to see Nokia's response if in fact they can approach that quality. Spec-wise, they should be able to. So that'll be an interesting story to follow. Next up, Qualcomm. Supposedly, and I say supposedly, guys, because this kind of crap just makes me so skeptical. I know marketing, to a point, horrible at self-promotion, perhaps, but work very closely in IT with the marketing departments. And when I hear about these leaked blog posts that coincidentally happen about a week before an event, I kind of wonder, really leaked? or intentional marketing. And I'm kind of leaning, honestly, towards intentional marketing because supposedly at the event, CES 2017, when they're going to formally announce this uh, chip, the specs get leaked. All right, to get people excited? I think so. So their new SOC, which is System on a Chip, it's called the uh, new Snapdragon 835 mobile processor. It's specifically designed for AR, VR, 30% smaller, 27% more powerful, and 40% more efficient. So longer battery life, runs cooler, et cetera, et cetera. Also manufactured by Samsung to 10 nanometer fabrication process, which is awesome. That is pretty damn cool. Now, Let's see what they reveal during CES and then look back at this and maybe have a better idea on if this was leaked or not. But like I said, for where I'm sitting right now without any evidence, this is just pure speculation, it sure as hell looks like it was marketing based, but I could be wrong. All right, next story, Tacti teaming up with Swedish giant Ericsson for augmented and virtual reality tech, and they're calling this device the Dynamic Tactile Wave. Now, Ericsson is primarily at this event for one reason and one reason only, and that's their 5G technology. But this partnership shows that they have diversified into other areas. Now, we looked at this a few months ago. It's a device that sits at basically like a thimble, but for your fingertips, so for all your fingers, providing haptic feedback. Tacti is a small U.S. startup. They've indicated that at the CES event, they're going to have a kiosk where you can try this technology out through a browsable menu. So navigate your way through a menu. Not only will you be able to do that, it will provide tactile haptic feedback. So you'll have navigational feedback while you're kind of going through the navigation system. So very cool. And again, just shows the diverse technology in this race slash war that's going on. It's all over the place, all over the radar, all kinds of different things hoping to converge. And at some point, they probably will. But again, who are the winners going to be? Who are the casualties going to be? We won't know that yet. But either way, Tacti 
looks to have a very cool product on their hands with this and it'll be interesting to see now there's a dr Catherine kuchenbecker she has spent 15 years researching haptics she works for this company uh, tacti and she said the haptic feedback is so good on this device if you're at a 360 concert you could reach out and this is her exact quote and touch the locks of the rock star's hair well, strange maybe, I don't know, whatever your thing is, but you would have that ability to do that. Probably not what I'd be thinking of during a concert, but who knows, right? Everyone has different reasons, I suppose, for being at a concert. Now, next news story, Binary VR has begun shipping their first dev kit for their facial tracking technology. We talked about some eye tracking companies that were recently gobbled up through acquisition. This is an example of a company that so far has still kind of gone it alone with very specific focused VR technology. This one, well, augmented and VR, facial recognition. Now it looks pretty cool in the video. It really does match the person's facial expressions and it's basically an infrared 3D capture camera that hangs in front of pretty much every PC HMD, capturing your facial expressions in what looks like real time. Where I see this being a huge benefit is social applications. And the reason I say that, I don't know about you guys, I've tried it now a few times, but when I go into a social app, I'm trying to have a meaningful conversation with somebody and I'm greeted with basically a Calvin and Hobbes style cartoon character. I just can't take it seriously. Big bubble eyes, big honking nose, massive Dumbo ears. I would much prefer for social type applications, more realistic avatars. And I think that is where binary VR could achieve the most success is social VR application. So you'd wonder, a company like this for somebody like Facebook to acquire. That to me would seem natural. The only thing missing to me when I saw Zuckerberg's presentation, again, he's talking to other cartoon avatars on his team. Imagine using this technology for that and more realistic looking avatars, how much better that would have come across. But again, that's a personal thing. Now, the kits are selling for 349 US, those dev kits and also will come, aside from their own SDK, a Unity plugin SDK as well. Next news story, 3D Rudder. Uh, this is the first locomotion device in a long time. I've looked at it and said, you know what? This actually has application that I could see myself using. What I like about it is it's a locomotion device and it looks a lot like those self-balancing yoga style discs, right? You know, where you try to get your balance with two feet as a form of exercise. It looks a lot like that, except you operate it from a seated position. So you could play a standing VR game, cockpit style, and locomotion controlled with your feet. Now, there's a video at the link. Have a look. The guy's playing Minecraft with the Vive. He's turning with this disc going forward, slowing down, speeding up, going backwards, all strictly with his feet. So people who have mobility problems, maybe they can't be on their feet for a long time, but want to experience room scale. That's where I see this 3D rudder wireless too, really shining is that type of application. And depending on the price, because here's the catch, supposedly, according to the dev, it relies on remapping controls. So it should be fairly universal, meaning you can use this with almost anything. If you can map a control to it, you could use it. And like I said, to be able to do that seated for some people is gonna be huge. So again, that's the 3D rudder wireless. Last news story, just again, another diverse example of the kind of technology climate that we're in. This is from Asus and it's called the Vivo PCX. It is a super compact uh, desktop box. It looks a lot like 
the Avery media capture card that I have, the HD2, just a small little box, literally, and packed inside that for $799 US, $799, Core i5 KB Lake processor, 8 gigs of RAM, half a terabyte SSD, NVIDIA GTX 1060 GPU, two HDMI ports, and display port out, expected to retail March 2017, so end of the first quarter. Very freaking cool, and like I said, very small. Now they have a desktop variant that is way more powerful. It's got an obscene amount of RAM, like 64 gigs, the 1080 version of the card, obviously full size, but for what this provides you, especially with that 1060, not a bad entry solution that's small that you could take out with you. That plus the HMD you could literally carry to a buddy's house without filling half your car with crap. So very cool. All right, guys, that's it for the news. I'm going to have uh, hopefully finally that video on the touch controllers, which the news, the pressure is always on to get it out. But that one I've just been taking my time on and testing and make sure I'm happy with it when I release it. I'm almost at that point, as well as uh, one other video. All right, guys, cheers as always, and definitely catch you on the VR flip side.